An integer literal refers to a sequence of digits. An integer literal can be a decimal. So any single character I will be able to store as a literal. I have group of characters. That's the reason I will be able to call this as a string. Once it comes to the concept of variables, what should I know? Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the very interesting session on the .NET programming. Especially, I will be discussing what exactly the literals, variables and the data types is all about in this session. So guys, all of you know this topics, we have studied this in our previous sessions in the previous programming languages. But yes, let us recollect those topics in this session too. So let's begin. So what is that I have in this session with all of you? So guys, I will be discussing what exactly literals is all about. Along with that, I will also discuss what exactly the variables along with that data types, reference types and the declaration of variables. This is what I will be discussing with all of you in this session. So guys, the first topic that I have here is all about literals. So before I explain all these things to all of you, let's understand and let's discuss this topic from the beginning. Say for example, if I write a is equal to 10, so the value what I have here, this is what I will call it as a literal, is what you need to remember. So fine, now it's time for all of us to understand the different types of literals. That's going to be different types of values which I'm going to store in the variable. This is what I will call it as a variable. This is what you need to remember. All right. So fine. So what are the different types of literals that I have? Different types of values that I have is what I will be discussing with all of you. The first one that I have is integer literal. So guys, all of you know that. Now what is integer? All right. So fine. An integer literal refers to a sequence of digits. An integer literal can be a decimal octal or hexadecimal constant say to keep it very simple guys suppose if i write something okay something like this can you identify what is integer here yes of course this part whatever i write so this is what i will call it as an integer this is what i will call it as an integer number zero to nine any combination whatever you write so let me make it very simple to understand so any combination of zero to nine so that is what i will call it as a integer literal so fine then what are the next type of literal that i have so that next type of literal that i have is real literal so li real literal is nothing but say for example i have 10.35 let me take a same example if i write like this this is what i will call as a real literal if i have the floating points if i have the floating points or the decimal values so such type of values i will be calling it as a Real literals is what you need to remember. So fine, moving forward to the next one, Boolean. Whenever I say Boolean, so you need to understand, I will be using this Boolean literals to represent two values. The first one is true, the second one is false. So I will be able to store only two kinds of value. What is that? The first one is true and the second one is false. I will not be able to store any other value. That's what you need to remember. Say, for example, if I have a variable, I should be able to store only true or I will be able to store only false. That's what you need to remember. Only these two values I will be able to store in this variable. So what type of uh, variable should be this? So this should be of Boolean type. So that's what you need to remember. Only then I will be able to store the Boolean literal. So fine. What is the next type of value I can store in the C hash? I have single character literal. What is the meaning of single character literal? I will be able to store only one character. So please understand, when I say one character, it doesn't mean that only alphabets. So it is not like that. If you're thinking like that, character in the sense, I will be, take, I will be thinking like you know, A to Z. No, it is not like that. It is not only A to Z. All right. So any single character, okay, whatever you have in the keyboard, one single character. It can be anything. It can be full stop. It can be five or it can be percentage. All these things are treated as character. I have, I have, uh, you know, semicolon. I have colon. A lot of things I have. So any single character, I will be able to store as a literal, as a value in a variable. So that is one kind that I have here as a fourth one. All right, moving forward to the next one that I have. So string literal, you all know that. What is the meaning of string literal? Strings 
or the group of characters that I have. So that is what I will call it as a string literals. Say for example, if I write, if I write my variable as a and I will write within double quotes, I will write Kaushik. Okay. So can I call this Kaushik as string? Yes, you can call this Kaushik as string. Yes. Why do you call this as a string? Because I have group of characters. I don't have one character. I have group of characters. That's the reason I will be able to call this as a string. So this is also one of the type of literal that we have. What is the meaning of literal? It's a value which I'm trying to store here. Yes. And that's what you need to remember here. Moving forward to the last one. Backslash literal. We have a, a lot of backslash literals. Say for example, C ash supports backslash literals. So guys, if I write no slash in new line slash T new tab like this, a lot of uh, backslash literals are there. Even I can also save or I can also store it in a variable is what you need to remember in the C sharp. That's one of the feature that we have in the C sharp. So in total, how many literals, how many different types of values that we can store in a variable in C ash, that's going to be the six. That's what you need to remember at this point of time. So now you have a special or you have a clear idea that how many different types of values that you are going to store in a variable. All right, so moving forward to the next one, what is the next topic that I have? Let me just check. It's going to be a variable. So fine, in this part, I have discussed this part, how many types of values you can store. But now it's a time for me to discuss this thing. What is this? So this is what I will call it as a variable. This is what I will call it as a variable. Once it comes to the concept of variables, what should I know? So what is the important thing that I should know? So first thing that you should know is this is the name that you are giving for this memory location, where exactly this 10 you are storing. For example, imagine this is what you will write in the program, right? But when it comes to the memory, imagine this is a memory location. This 10 you are storing in this location and you are naming or you are giving a name to this memory location that is E. So this is what I will call it as a variable name. This is what you need to remember. So fine, you understood that. The next important point that you need to remember with respect to the variable name is, Whenever you are naming a variable, you have to follow some of the rules. That is what we call it as the identifier rules. What is that rule that I have to follow when I'm naming a variable? The first rule that I have to follow is they should or they must not begin with the digit. That's what you need to remember. What is the meaning of it? So say for example, I'm writing A is equal to 10. I cannot start like this, 1a is equal to 10. So this is not a valid way to name a variable. That's the first point that you should remember. The second thing, uppercase and lower cases are different. This is the second thing that you need to remember. So what is the meaning of it? Say for example, a is equal to 10 and a is equal to 10. Both are different. Both are different. In the sense, it is case sensitive. This is what you need to remember in the second point. What is the third point that I have? So it should not be a keyword. What is the meaning of it? So all of you would have come across in the programming language. Guys, uh, do you all remember if? Do you all remember if? So what is the meaning of if? So you will be using this if for a, to check a condition, right? So something like this. Do you all remember something? Yeah, so we have studied this in a long back, in ages back, right? So yeah, um, uh, that's what I'm speaking. Now, can I write something like this if is equal to 10? No. Why? Because this if is already predefined. If it is a predefined, then I will be calling this if as a reserve word. So I shouldn't be using if is a keyword. If it is a keyword, I'm not supposed to use that as a variable name. That's what you need to remember with the third point. What is the fourth point that I have? When it comes to the fourth point, white space is not allowed. What is the meaning of white space? For example, I have A, oh, I'm feeling bored, so I will give some space, then I will have B is equal to 10. Is this a valid? So in between I have white space, okay, I've given, I've, I've pressed enter or I've 
Is it enter? No, I have pressed space bar. So guys, can I do that? No, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to give space here. That's what you need to remember. No space is allowed in between. So that's what you need to remember. Suppose if you give like this, so to which variable shall I allocate or assign this value? So that will be a problem that leads to confusion to the compiler. So that's why not supposed to give a white space. Moving forward to the last one, variable name can be of any length. So you don't have to worry about the length. So these points, whenever you are uh, declaring or whenever you are giving a name for the variable, so please take a little care whenever you are assigning or whenever creating the variable name. All right, moving forward to the next one. So guys, I have the data types. So let me just tell you why do we have data types and what is the use of data type. Let me just take an example uh, uh, to explain the concept of data types. Guys, uh, this is an intelligent way that we have in our programming language, especially to manage the memory, we have this concept. Say for example, I have one coconut, okay? I have one coconut and I have one gunny bag and I have one handbag and one college bag. So which bag do you prefer to carry one single coconut? My dear students, obviously we prefer to carry a handbag, right? So why are you not choosing the gunny bag and the college bag? Gunny bag is too big to carry one single coconut in the same way. So the college bag is also too big to carry one single coconut. So in these two cases, I'm just wasting the space which is not required for me to carry one single coconut. So that's the reason I'm choosing the handbag. So just to save the space, I'm using the handbag. That's a point that you need to observe in this example. Same thing happens even in the programming language. So each literal has got different weightage of memory. So I don't have to waste my memory. So by allocating, same amount of memory for all the literals. So that's the reason I have something called data types, which will allocate the fixed and the required size to allocate for the each and every different types of literals that I have. So that's the idea behind the concept of data type that we have. My dear students, let's take a look. What are the different types of data type that we have? So when it comes to the C hash data type, it's quite different when you compare to all other programming languages. So here, when it comes to the C as data type, we have major categories as value data types, pointer data types, and the reference data types. What exactly values data type and the pointer data type and reference data type? The major difference between this value and the pointer and reference data type is, so you will have two categories. These two comes to one category, and this one comes to one category. So what happens with this category, you will be storing the values. But when it comes to these two, you will not store the values. Instead, you will store the reference. What is the meaning of reference? I have the value here, but where exactly I have the value, that address is what I will call it as a reference. So that reference you will be storing with the help of these data types. But when it comes to this category, directly you will store the values. That's the major difference that you should know before I start explaining the different data types that we have. All right, so let's start. When it comes to value data type, my dear students, I have two category again. The first one is predefined data type. Second one is user defined data type. Let me just tell you what exactly predefined data type and what exactly user defined data type. Predefined data type in the sense it is already defined. A user should not, or user, user don't have to scratch their head to do anything. It is already there, just have to use it. But when it comes to the user defined, so user can customize his or our own data type however they want according to the syntax with respect to the enumeration and structure. Guys, that's what the meaning of user defined data type. But when it comes to the predefined data type, so we have integer, boolean, float, lot of other data types, which we have already discussed is the fundamental data type, comes to this category. I don't have to waste your time by discussing that, no, it's an everything again and again. All right, so this is a brief uh, discussion with respect to the value data type. But when it comes to the pointer data type, pointer is a variable which holds the address of another variable. That's what you need to remember. 
I repeat, pointer is a variable which holds the address of another variable. Again, you need to observe here, we are storing the reference. We are not storing the value. Fine. When it comes to the reference data type, so I have again predefined and user defined. When it comes to the predefined, I have objects and strings. Objects is a basic thing for everything in the C hash. That's what you need to remember here. Because since I climb the C hash as a pure object oriented programming language. So everything in the C hash is treated in the form of objects. So that's what you need to remember at this point of time. So what exactly objects are? Can you just give me an example? Yes. My dear students, imagine I have given you a note, which is a handwritten note. Okay. So I will ask you to take the photocopy of it. All right. So that photocopy, what you are taking from my original notes, that photocopy is an object that you are creating. It's just a copy of my notes. My notes here works as a class. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the concept of object. So fine. I will be speaking about this in, in detail in the coming sessions too. All right. So you all know about strings, which you have uh, discussed very you know, in the previous slide. And then you have classes and interface. And also you will discuss about the delegates. And I will be discussing uh, chapters in detail with respect to the interfaces and classes in the coming session. Right now, you don't have to worry about it. So interface in the sense what? So in the previous session also, I have discussed, uh, you will have a car without any, you know, modifications or any, any stool, tools, you know, inbuilt to that car. It is just a skeleton car, which I'm giving it to you. However you want, you can alter it. So that's what you need to remember. There'll be no implementation here in the interface. You have to implement it. However you want, I will give you the skeleton. You do it, you build it, you fix it. Whatever you want, you can do it. So that's how the interface will be. I will be speaking about this in detail in the coming chapters. Don't worry. So this is what you just have to remember with respect to the different data types that we have in the C-Ash. All right. So guys, the last topic for the day, that's going to be the declaration of variables. Whenever you are declaring a variable, so you need to remember one thing. So what is that? The first thing that you need to remember is you have to mention the data type. You have to mention the data type. The second thing you need to remember the name of the variable, the name of the variable. This is the most important thing that you need to remember whenever you are declaring a variable. This is the syntax. This is the syntax that you need to remember to declare any variable. All right, so guys, by discussing these simple things in the session, so let me just wind up the session. So in the coming session, I have many more interesting stuff I will be discussing with all of you. So till then, happy learning, take care.